Life Audio. Hello. Thank you for listening to Your Daily Bible Verse, the podcast that examines one verse each day to learn more about God and His will for our lives. I'm your host, Kyle Norman. And after the short word from our sponsor, we will dive into today's Bible verse, Matthew chapter 15, verses 22 and 23. Hey everybody, I'm Dale. And I'm Tara. We're hosts of the Kynos Project podcast. Where we help you tackle ancient Christian truths in an everyday settings. To learn more and subscribe, go to lifeaudio.com. At Rocket, we know buying a home is exciting and a bit overwhelming. Ready to buy a home but stressed about writing those big checks? Rocket can help you save. When you buy with Rocket Homes and finance with Rocket Mortgage, you can get up to $10,000 cash toward closing from Rocket Mortgage. It's a pretty big deal. And when you can get only with Rocket. Visit onlywithrocket.com to get started today. For purchase transactions only, must log rate between 331 and 831. Call 837-ROCKET for conditions and restrictions. Equal housing letter license in all 50 states. And MLS Consumer Access.org number 3030. We all struggle in our faith from time to time. Psalm 23 speaks of the valley of darkness, and ancient writers often refer to the dark night of the soul. Life zigs when we want it to zag, and despite our best efforts, we sometimes struggle in our faith. But just because we feel spiritually discouraged doesn't mean that God has abandoned us or that we are failing in our life with God. If you need to be encouraged in your spiritual walk, I invite you to join me at RevKyleNorman.ca. Be reminded of the grace, hope, and love we have in Christ Jesus. When Jesus seems silent. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer one word. Matthew 15 Verses 22 and 23. Prayer is vital to our life with God. It's one of the most important activities that we can do for our spiritual lives. But prayer can also be frustrating. Prayer can be frustrating when we assume that the answer to our prayers, either yes or no, will be instantaneous or clear. And I don't know about you, but that hasn't always happened in my life. Yes, there have been times when God has answered my prayer with yes or no, quickly and clearly. But there's also been times where the Lord has seemed absent or silent. Or like the Canaanite woman, where I seek out to Jesus and cry for help, but don't seem to hear a response. As it says in the reading, Jesus did not answer her one word. And that place of seeming silence, it can sometimes feel like a lifetime, and it can be heartbreaking. Have you ever experienced that? Have you struggled with that? What do we do when Jesus seems silent? This is what the Canaanite woman faced. And we owe it to ourselves and to her to stop and just to remain here with the woman. We need to hear her deep frustration over not receiving an initial answer to her prayer, as good as it was, a prayer for her daughter. Because she doesn't know what's going on in this point. In her mind, and based on her understanding, the one person who would hear her cry, the one person who is to be filled with grace and love, seems to ignore her. And she doesn't understand. How do you think you might respond if you were her? Of course, as people who have read the story, we know that there is more going on here. Like all of scripture, you can't just excise this verse out of its larger context. We need to see what happens in the gamut of scripture. Jesus has just left the area of Gennesaret, and he's moved to the region of Tyre and Sidon. 
Now, not only was this Gentile territory, but for the Jewish person of the day, this was the epicenter of all pagan apostasy. No Jewish person, let alone a rabbi, would ever step foot into this territory. What happens in Tyre and Sidon stays in Tyre and Sidon. Nobody would go there. But Jesus, he goes there. Not only does Jesus enter the place where no respectable Jewish person would go, but he does so after he confronts the Pharisees about inner righteousness. Jesus teaches that being right with God is not about the exterior things of lineage or ritual action. We aren't clean, right, or holy simply because we belong to the right family or have made the right sacrifices. Being right with God, Jesus says, starts in the heart. And as if to put his teaching into action, Jesus immediately takes his disciples to the very people the Pharisees deemed unclean and wretched. He enters that place, and he stands with a woman in her distress. The presence of Jesus changes everything. The Canaanite woman may not have received a verbal response to her prayer at this moment. But what she does have is a vision of her Lord standing with her. And it is that vision that she holds on to. The woman clings to the incarnation. She clings to the witness of the Messiah. Jesus is there in her midst and she will not let him go. Even when it seems to be like everything is going against her. Even when the disciples ask, to send her away, when she hears Jesus say, I was sent to the lost sheep of Israel. Even when Jesus says, it's not right to take the children's bread and throw it away to the dogs, she remains steadfast in hope. She dares to believe that the very presence of Jesus with her testifies that in some way, his goodness and grace will make its way to her. When we place this passage amid the wider flow of Scripture, what we see is that Jesus never changes. His availability for us is unchanging. He is the one who will go out of his way to declare his love and his power to everyone. This fundamental truth helps us abide those times when we feel that Jesus is silent or when we can't understand what Jesus is doing in our lives. But Jesus' delays are never his dismissals. And a time of apparent silence is never a severing of his love. The presence of Jesus in our lives and in our prayers, it matters. Of course, this doesn't mean that we have stumbled upon some divine loophole where we will get what we want when we want it. Sometimes what Jesus does in our life or how Jesus responds to our prayers may seem confusing or even frustrating. But the question for us is not do we understand Jesus' response, but will we cling ruthlessly to Jesus? Will we believe that with Jesus there is healing and grace? Will we remain with him? This is what the Canaanite woman does. And this is what we are called to do, even if Jesus appears silent. Your Daily Bible Verse is a production of Life Audio and Salem Media. If you liked what you heard today, please take a second to rate and review this podcast in your favorite podcast app so that more listeners like you can find the show. For more faith-filled, inspirational podcasts, visit us at lifeaudio.com. Is life feeling chaotic? I get it. I'm Rachel Wojo, host of the Untangling Life podcast. Don't miss the passionate encouragement and faith-based resources you need to help you clear your head and calm your heart. As Shell says, it feels like Rachel always knows what I need to hear. She keeps it real and is so humble. 
Her podcast is just the cherry on top. Enjoy Untangling Life with Rachel Wojo on lifeaudio.com or your favorite podcast app now.